Hi everyone, I'm Adam Thurgood of Hightower Las Vegas and welcome to our fast and furious executive summary version of our client briefing. We have a more detailed version that you can find on our website if you'd like to dive in. So today's presentation is called Rough Waters and we, we titled it this way because we think that we're in a, a pretty tricky environment both in the economy and the market. So today we're going to talk about the current state of the economy, uh, recessionary risks, and how we're positioning portfolios as a result of what we see. So when we look at uh, real GDP or assess the current state of economy, we can see wild swings going back to 2020 and 2021. We've come down a lot in terms of growth since then, but we've bounced off the 1% line. We're at 1.6% now. Now, why is 1% important? Well, if you look back over time, these red bars indicate recession. And every time we've gone below 1%, it's been a high risk situation for a recession. So we're watching this line in the sand very closely. Now this is all happening in an environment with still relatively high consumer price inflation. While inflation has come down from these high elevated orange dots here, we're still well above the Fed's 2% target on the consumer level. So the Fed remains very aggressive and they're keeping a, a, a foot basically on the brakes for the economy. And that has caused a really interesting situation to emerge with the banking sector. As rates have been pushed up so aggressively, we now can get 5% plus interest on three month treasuries, while banks are still not paying us much to hold our cash there. So it's no wonder that people started to move money out of the banking system into money markets, into uh, treasuries to capture that yield. And what it's caused is a liquidity crunch where that low relative deposit rate has caused capital flight. And unfortunately with the lag, that tends to lead to lower credit availability. When we look at measures of credit availability, like uh, the banks that are tightening lending standards, roughly 50% of banks are tightening their lending standards regardless of if you're a small or a large business. And if you look back over time, again, recession bars uh, tend to pop up when you've seen a spike in this index like we've seen. So another big measure that we like to look at to assess what is happening with the economy is leading indicators. And again, this is the year over year change in leading indicators. We're down almost 8%. And once you get below 5%, it's tended to coincide with a recession. So the risks are high that the market has, uh, or that the economy is about to head into recession. And this is a complicated chart, but I'm going to explain it uh, pretty quickly. The top panel, the orange line, is what the market expects the three month treasury rate to be 18 months from now, subtracted from the current three month rate. And so what you're seeing is you know, close to a 2% difference between what the market expects the, the rate will be in 18 months from where it is today. Now, why would that happen? Well, it would only happen if the Fed cut rates and the Fed would only cut rates if there was a weak economy. And so when we look at when this measure bottomed in the past, which is depicted with these black dotted lines, you can see that it tended to occur before a recession. And more importantly for your portfolios, if you look at the bottom panel, it tended to occur before the S&P 500 eventually hit its bottom. So if we are headed into a recession, uh, this, is not, uh, this chart is telling us that, that there are risks on the horizon. So we do think that the, the weight of the evidence skews towards more risk in the economy and a recession is becoming our base case. So what we're doing is we're trying to protect portfolios by taking some tactical actions. The first is to overweight sectors that tend to be more defensive like healthcare and consumer staples, things you need versus want, and underweight the financials and the industrials, the more cyclical components of the economy. And we're also focusing on companies that have better financial strength and, and better profitability and trying not to own as many companies that have more variability in their earnings and worse financial strength or higher leverage. Now, what's also interesting is that the international markets provide a fairly interesting value opportunity right now. They're stronger on a, on a trend basis and they've been outperforming the US market for the past year and a half or so. The purple bars are when the international markets are performing better than the US and vice versa. So we've been on this long 14 year stretch where the US markets outperformed, uh, but that looks to be changing. And what you'll notice from the graph is that these, these periods tend to be fairly long lived. So if the international market is indeed headed for a period of outperformance, we think that it could be uh, one that has some legs to it. 
Now, having said that, you want to have some safe harbors or some defense in the portfolio in addition to being more defensive in, in, within the equity sector. And now you get paid to wait. So we've raised some cash. We have it parked in a variety of different maturities of treasuries where we're getting you know, 5% in, in some cases to hold that money. That's very compelling. And then we also have a fairly hefty weight to precious metals, specifically gold. Gold is an asset that tends to do well when geopolitical risks are high, when the economy is weak, when, when interest rates might be, headed in the, 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 uh, what might be headed down. And we believe that gold offers a really good ballast to portfolios. And interestingly enough, the central banks around the world are buying gold at an aggressive pace. And we view that as a positive and interesting sign for the global economy. Uh, well, it's a, it's a positive sign for our positioning, interesting sign for the global economy. So we are dealing with some rough waters here. We do think that there will be a path through, but it's going to be a choppy ride, and we're here to help you navigate that process. So that's all we have for you today, but don't hesitate to go to our website and check out some of the other content that we create, like the weekly fact pack and some other videos related to wealth management and financial markets. As always, you know where to find us, and we'll see you next time.